Well, we're in the national uh, newspaper uh, this morning. I, I thought I'd just uh, have a quick look at what they've uh, written about. This is quite interesting to see how the media works on occasions. So here we are, uh, headline, Disgusting Scottish Family Party Plans Protest at Sandiford Clinic. But now that's obviously structured to make it read as Disgusting Scottish Family Party. But anyway, so uh, planning these protests at Sandiford Clinic. So what's this? all about. So let's uh, see. So a fringe political party in Scotland has been labelled disgusting after announcing plans to protest outside a sexual health clinic. Now notice the way this works. Who gets the headline? The headline is the Green MSP who says we're disgusting rather than anything we've got to say. That, that's just routine. That's the way it always works uh, in the media. And I'm not just meaning certain sections of the media. I'm meaning the media the whole, every newspaper, every, uh, you know, sort of mainstream TV channel as well. Anyway, so, um, right, we're planning demonstrations outside the Sandiford Clinic. The NHS clinic in Glasgow provides specialist sexual health care, including vasectomies, abortion, gender services. It's been the target of anti-abortion activists in recent, recent months, becoming a key battleground in the push to install protest buffer zones around such facilities. Right, Scottish Green MSP Gillian Mackay has proposed a member's bill that will create neutral zones around sexual health clinics where protest is bought. So what's happened here basically is the journalist or whoever was watching our live stream to try and get a story, they thought, ah, that, that's it. We can use this as an excuse for another article about buffer zones. Okay? Now, some people might think, oh, you see, you've, you've fallen into their trap. You've given them ammunition. You've given them an excuse for another story. No, no, they, they run endless stories regardless. What we've done is in among their story that they think is entirely hostile to us, we've put some nuggets of truth, which is uh, the best we can hope for in a publication like The National. So let's see, uh, let's see what's happened. So asked during a live stream earlier this week if there were protests outside Sandiford being organised, the Scottish Family Party's Richard Lucas, below left, said, we need to do that, don't we? Yes, we're going to get there soon. Yes, we did. I did indeed have that conversation right now. Fraser, above right, um, said um, it has to be done. Every child that walks through the door of the Sandiford in order to get hormones or surgery is a child failed. Absolutely, absolutely correct. Right, so in this article, is there any effort at all to respond to that point? No, they, they just ignore. there's no debate, there's no discussion. There's no intelligent engagement with what anyone's saying. They, they just sort of spout something unrelated to it. Right, the Scottish Family Party later made clear that their objections to the clinic, uh, the, the, the um, person who wrote this emailed me and I, I sent something to them. Uh, they said um, the clinic includes abortion services, which are termed killing unborn children, and administering the immoral, vulgar and corrupting sex education resources recommended by the Scottish Government, which it is. I mean, it's now in the same building. That's where the rshp.scot project is now based and the the gender so-called treatments for uh children as well are based there so green msp Mackay said that any campaigners targeting sandiford or other medical facilities are, were acting disgracefully all right let's see what we proposed let's see what was disgraceful she went on they're trying to intimidate and harass people and deter them from accessing health care okay Right, for any so-called political party to do this and boast about it online, didn't boast about it, we just flew to the idea, um, is disgusting. Uh, yet, time and again, the Scottish Family Party has made it clear that there is no low that it won't sink to. It's the old, uh, you should be ashamed of yourselves sort of line. Like, we're the people who want to kill unborn children, we're the goodies, and we're so good that anyone who opposes us or disagrees with us, they are just a disgrace, they are disgusting. They're disgusting. Right. Uh, nobody should have to endure these cruel attacks on their rights to health care. We're, we're cruelly attacking people. Well, what is it we're going to do there when these cruel attacks? Well, let's let's see. My member's bill will stop them for good. Right. So in a response, Lucas accused the Greens of holding extreme views and claimed that they want to see babies torn limb from limb just before birth. That is indeed the policy of the Green Party, full decriminalisation of abortion, so there will be no time limits. Currently, there are legal time limits. The Greens want to do away with the legal time limits. Why would you want to do away with all time limits 
if it wasn't to allow abortions at any time. I mean, it's just obvious, isn't it? So that's their policy. The other Dems are the same. Uh, Labour, it's a bit debatable. UK Labour had that as their policy. Uh, the SNP funds organisations that argue for that as well. And the Conservatives don't care. So, so they're the parties in the uh, in the Scottish Parliament. So I said in my, in my email, how odd that some people think the Greens are the good people and we're the bad people, despite the fact that that is what the Greens policy is. So any comeback on that? Any argument against it? Anyone want to explain why we're wrong? Julian Mackay, do you want to come and defend your corner on that one? No. So it's not a debate. It's like in the Scottish Parliament. You say something, but then the other people don't respond to it. Now, I didn't have the chance to respond to what Julian Mackay was saying because you know, I sent my email and then she's added it in later. But yeah, but there's no sort of intelligent exchange of ideas here. But we've got some pro-life truth and truth in other areas as well in the pages of the National. And some people read it and think, yep, yeah, I agree with that. Some people read it, it might be challenged, might start to change their thinking. Um, but whether that happens or not, still, speaking the truth is our uh, duty. The Scottish Family Party further confirmed that they are planning a protest. I'm not sure planning is quite, a, quite the right thing, considering that will probably involve filming a video or gathering people for a protest outside the clinic's working hours. Okay, that's the two things. The first one, filming a video. In other words, going along and standing out there and saying, right, this is what goes on here. There's this, there's this, and there's this. We don't think that's right. This isn't what the NHS should be spending its money on. This is harming people, not helping people. So we don't think it's right. So making a video there. Okay, is that, what was it, sort of, uh, you know, uh, harassing people or, you know, cruelly intimidating them, whatever the words was? Is that, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Then I said, if we're going to have a gathering, some sort of protest, if, if we were to do that, we'd probably do it outside the clinic's working hours. Because as a political party, our job isn't to be there with a placard, for example, saying, don't go in for gender reassignment treatment. It's not a good idea, right? If someone did want to stand there with placards and try and persuade people down a different road, I think that would be perfectly reasonable to do. Uh, but as a political party, that's not what, what uh, this is the activity uh, we engage in with us, Scottish Family Party hat on. So uh, that's, uh, and, and yet they jump on this as a buffer zone issue where clearly it is not. You know, standing in the street making a video, that, that's not anything remotely related to anything buffer zones would be to do with. Um, having some sort of gathering outside the clinic, outside working hours, again, completely irrelevant to the idea of uh, buffer zones. But you can see what they've done here. They're just taking this as an excuse to have one more article about buffer zones. I mean, this is not journalism. This is campaigning through a, a propaganda outlet, basically. But I say it's not just the National. It's the same in the Times. It's the same in you know virtually every other newspaper as well. Just the pro-buffer zone side basically write the articles for them. And they just get published one after another after another. So in any case, we've got a little bit of truth in the National, and that's always a good thing. Right, our, our conference is tomorrow. Um, you know, the bookings have closed now. I, I don't know if you can fit any more people in. But if you still would like to go, email contact at scottishfamily.org, contact at scottishfamily.org about the conference or, or the dinner. I don't know if you can fit any, um, squeeze any more, anyone else in at this stage, but uh, you're welcome to drop an email and see. Right, thanks for watching.